Hi guys, Tom Turner here with AM Global. Today we want to introduce to you our EchoMaster Blind Spot Elimination Kit for the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter Van. It's the most popular commercial van on the market today. That's why we decided to make a kit for it. The kit comes in this box. The part number for EchoMaster is going to be FCTP-MB1103. We also have an 1102 kit. The 1102 kit is if you want to replace the factory radio with an aftermarket radio like a Kenwood or a Pioneer. The 1103 kit that we have here today for you is to interface with the factory radio that comes in the late model Sprinter van. We have an 1101 kit. The 1101 kit is going to be used for the Sprinter van with a radio delete option. We also have an 1104 kit. The 1104 kit doesn't interface with any radio. What it does is allow you to add any monitor that you want. You can add a mirror, you can add a dash mount monitor, you can do whatever you want with it. So you can see we have a kit for all your needs for your Sprinter van. Let me go through the parts. These are the parts that I have laid out for, before me today, and let's go through each one of them. Here we have our Radio Pro, our Pack Radio Pro interface model. This is gonna interface with the van. Plugs into the factory radio harness. This is our interface harness that's gonna plug into that. Here's our Pack VS41 interface model. This module here deciphers the CAN signals from the turn signals and the reverse trigger. This is our harness that plugs into that, accepts all of our cameras. Here we have our mirror caps. We have a left side, right side mirror cap. These mirror caps are compatible with either standard mirrors or the tow mirrors, the extended tow mirror that the Sprinter fan has. Here are the camera inserts. We have two different types of inserts that are both compatible with the standard mirror or the tow mirror. These inserts are labeled to make it easy for the installer. LHT is for left hand tow mirror. RHT is for right hand tow mirror. LH left hand mirror. RH right hand mirror. These inserts are very critical because they determine the angle that the camera is going to be sitting at on the end of the mirror. We also have camera extensions. We have a driver side extension and a passenger side extension. One's a little longer than the other, so they're made specifically for the Sprinter van. You're not going to have a whole lot of excess cable in this van when we're done with this. This is made for the van. Here we have our actual camera lenses. Power supplies that plug into the cameras and into the extension harnesses. And if the van is already equipped with a factory backup camera, we give you the adapters that allow you to retain that factory backup camera, just simply plug these in. If it, already, if it doesn't have a backup camera, you can add a backup camera to this van and plug that into this kit. You also have the ability or capability to plug a front camera into this van as well. So what we're basically doing here is eventually completely eliminating blind spots all the way around this van and making it a lot safer for the end user to drive. All right guys, so that's all the parts that are included in the MB1103 kit, and let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you how to install this. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove the mirror glass. We're gonna to wanna to take the top glass and push it all the way in so that we can get our hand here behind that bottom glass piece. Go ahead and pop that out. We've got a couple connectors here. Those connectors are uh, for the defroster. And go ahead and just slide those off of there. Now that we've got that removed, we're gonna wanna go ahead and tilt the top piece of glass all the way out. Once I have the top piece of glass tilted all the way out, I wanna get my hands up underneath of that so that I can create enough surface area and enough leverage to go ahead and pop that out of there. I don't wanna just grab it by the corners or push on it with my thumbs. I'll risk the chance of breaking the mirror. Looking at myself in the mirror never gets old. <laughs> Two more connectors up here. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect those. Sit that piece of glass aside. We've got some torque screws here. They're T20 torque screws. We're gonna wanna go ahead and unscrew that so that we can disconnect the rear or front cap of this mirror. Okay, I've removed four of the T20 screws and that front ring is gonna come off now. I'm gonna set that aside carefully. All right, now that front cap is gonna come off and we're gonna disconnect the bulb, turn signal bulb. Here we have the front cap with the turn signal bulb and lens. So now I've removed the turn signal lens and this is where our camera insert is gonna go. All right, so here we're gonna go ahead and remove the door panel so that we can fish our wire from the mirror through the door and then through the boot on into the dash cavity. The first step is basically unlocking this bottom panel. Removing the bottom panel.
disconnecting the light, if equipped with the light. Some vans don't have that light. Here at the bottom of the door panel, we have two more T20 screws. Set the screws aside in a safe place so you don't lose them. Now we're gonna pr pry the door handle cover off of the door handle, and we're gonna wanna use a nylon pry tool to do that so we don't damage the plastic. There it is. So we're gonna use our pry tool to pry this plast black plastic handle cover off. Under that, we're gonna have a couple more screws we gotta take out. So there's two screws in here. These are larger, they're T30 screws. We're gonna go ahead and remove those. Now that we've got the two T20 screws down here and the two T30 screws up here removed, we have to remove these screw cover caps. You want to be careful so that you don't scratch the plastic door panel. You've got T20s up here as well, and then this whole piece is going to pry off and lift up. The rest of this door panel is held on by clips, so we're going to go ahead and pop those clips. Clips are held on pretty strong, so we want to unclip that carefully and then go ahead and remove the door panel, disconnecting any of the connectors behind the panel. There it is. All right, we've got three more screws left. These three screws mount the mirror arm to the door. There's a screw cap cover here that we need to remove. And then there's two T30 screws up here. So there's three T30 screws total that we need to remove so that the mirror can, uh, we can pull the mirror off of the door and then fish our cable through the mirror. Uh, there's a clip up top. So we've got the three mounting screws removed there. We've got a little clip at the top here. The edge of the door gets in the way there, so you're gonna to wanna to pry that out so that you can lift and remove that clip. So it's not necessary to completely remove the mirror arm. I like to put some tape here so we don't scratch anything. We can let it hang like this. We're simply gonna be fishing our camera harness through this hole here, down into this cavity. From there, we're going to fish up through the door boot. If you remove the speaker, it gives you a little more access to get your hand up here so you can guide your fish wire tool. We like to use a long zip tie to fish our wire through. It's a little tip, it makes things a little bit easier. So you can see I've got my long zip tie fished through the mirror cavity here. I'm gonna tape the end of my camera harness onto that and then run that down into the door cavity. Here I've taped my camera harness to my zip tie and I'm just gonna feed that through the mirror arm. And from there down into the door cavity. So I've got my camera harness fished through the door cavity, and now I'm gonna take this harness and fish it up through the boot. I can reach my hand up here and grab it once it feeds through the boot here. So just basically go ahead and take your long zip tie and fish this straight up from the speaker cavity through the boot. Grab the other side with your hand, feed it through. You've only got enough length here to get through to that other side. Add your extension from there. So by removing the one side of the boot and not both sides of the boot, it makes it a lot easier to put the boot back together. Uh, you can see here I've used my zip tie to fish this up through that boot and down. So now I'm going to add the camera extension onto this and then run this into the dash cavity. So from this end of the camera cable, we're going to plug in our power camera extension cable. 
From here, we're going to add our ex camera extension cable, and that is going to be the extension 150. Each cable is labeled. So 150 is going to be on your passenger side, and 170 we're going to use for the driver's side. But at this point, we're going to replace the three T30 screws that we removed to remove the mirror arm. We can get the mirror arm re-secured to the door, and then we can add the camera to the mirror cap. Okay, so now we're gonna install the camera on the end of the mirror cap. Like we said before, our kit is compatible with either the standard mirrors or the extended version, the tow mirror. Both mirror caps are essentially the same. However, the angle that that camera is gonna be sitting at is gonna be a little bit different. We have these inserts, angled inserts. They're all labeled right hand, left hand, or right hand toe, or left hand toe. And you'll see that engraved on the end of the, the insert. What we want to do is take our camera lens, insert it into the insert, pop it into place. We can then pivot it, line our key up with a retaining ring here, which is keyed so that we get our horizon line perfect. All right, we want to make sure that the lens is completely seated, that our key is lined up and in place, and then we have two retaining screws that we want to insert here to lock that into place so that it doesn't move while you're driving. Just hand tighten that with a screwdriver. Make sure you don't strip that out. All right, we've added our retaining ring after we've inserted our camera lens. We've got it seated completely and clipped into place. We want to add these two screws so that we lock this into place so it doesn't move while we're driving the car. That's just a number one filled screwdriver. Now we want to just slide this into our mirror cap. And we've got one last screw that's going to secure that into place. All right, that's the passenger side. Now just repeat the process for the driver's side. All right guys, here's a little tech tip. When you insert our camera lens into the camera insert, the appropriate insert, each one of the inserts is actually labeled right hand, left hand, right hand toe, or left hand toe. We wanna to take the little notch in the camera lens and line that up with the marking on the insert. Once we insert that, line that up, we then take the retaining um, ring with the key on it and line that up with the notch that's on the back side of the camera lens. After we do that, we screw everything together to secure it. All right, you can see I've got the camera installed on the mirror cap and then I reinserted the um, turn signal indicator as well that basically just so slides into place. <clears throat> now what I want to do is go ahead and reinstall that onto the mirror arm. Go ahead and replace the four T20 screws that you removed in the previous step. And go ahead and make our camera, our threaded camera connection, thread the camera connection back on securely. Okay, now we gotta make sure that we reconnect the defroster connectors and then simply snap the glass, the top piece and the bottom piece back into the mirror housing. Mm -hmm. There it is. And we're gonna do the same thing with the bottom piece of glass. So that side's complete right there. And you're 
repeat that procedure on the driver's side. Okay guys, if you have a sprinter van with a tow mirror, you've got these extended arms here. They're a little more difficult to fish our camera cable through that arm. What you're gonna wanna do is fish that through that lower arm. Take a long zip tie, tape your camera cable to that zip tie, fish it through the bottom. It helps to take the mirror and actually push the mirror inward. You'll see the entry point into the uh, mirror mount, and then from there you can pull it through and fish down into the door cavity. Okay hey guys, we're in our 2016 Mercedes Sprinter van and we're going to go ahead and proceed to remove the radio. What we need to do is take a plastic trim pry tool, a removal tool, and pry the panel surrounding the radio. Prior to doing that, I like to use some blue painter's tape, tape up around that surface so that we don't scratch anything. I'll start at the top corner. Once I can get my fingers behind the panel, go ahead and use your fingers. There's no better tool. We can suspend the panel and let it just hang right below the climate controls. To remove the radio, we've got four T20 torque screws once again. Go ahead and remove the four screws. It's also a good idea to go ahead and tape up the climate controls. We don't want to scratch anything. After all, it is a Mercedes Sprinter van. You know. Once we've got the radio out in our hands, we're going to disconnect the connectors behind the radio panel. Two. This particular radio has three connectors. If it had a factory backup camera, it would have four. Not to worry, it doesn't have a camera, but we're gonna add one to it because we can do that with our kit. Go ahead and grab our primary radio interface harness and plug it into the factory connector. It's got a locking lever cam mechanism. I'm gonna lock that into place. Make sure you hear that click and make sure that's snug. The other end of this harness is going to plug into our PAC Radio Pro module. From here we can also plug in our VS41 switcher module. Now we're going to continue to route our camera extension harnesses up into this dash cavity and plug everything into our camera harness. All right, on this Sprinter van, wasn't equipped with a factory backup camera, so fortunately, EchoMaster has part number PCAM SPL-N, which replaces the third brake light here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. We've got two T20 Torx screws that we're gonna have to remove. Pop this out, slide our camera in. It's simple, we'll be done in minutes. Maybe, might take longer. With our PCAM camera, we have a 10 meter long cable, so even the longest Sprinter van is not a problem. We have a commercial quality cable that's shielded with commercial quality threaded connectors. What we need to do with our camera is actually transfer the LED bar that's in the factory third brake light and clip that into our camera. So we're still gonna use the same LED bar for the third brake light, but we're gonna add a night vision camera to the back here. Okay, on the factory third brake light lens, we need to basically pry out the LED light bar. It's clipped in all the way around. It looks like there's eight of them on both sides, four on both sides. So once you get that out, you're gonna transfer that into our PCAM SPL-N 
third brake light camera. That's gonna snap into place here, and then this is gonna plug back into the factory connector that's up there in the van. So the factory harness, I'm plugging that back in, back into the factory LED connector. Completely DOT approved. Department of Transportation. Okay, now that we have our camera extension harnesses routed up into our dash cavity, we wanna make sure that we connect those to our harness appropriately. So the left side is for our, obviously, for our driver's side blind spot camera. The one labeled right side is obviously for the passenger side blind spot camera. You're also gonna have another one labeled front. That's if you're gonna to wanna to put a front camera on this vehicle. The way the front camera works is it has a manual switch that we can flip on. It'll engage the front camera at slow speeds under eight miles per hour as you're pulling into a parking spot or something. Um, you could also add a backup camera to that. The backup camera will work when the vehicle's in reverse. If you're adding a backup camera to the van, we can conveniently provide for you the 12 volt output and ground wire for the backup camera. So you're gonna to wanna to power it off those two wires right here and they're conveniently labeled reverse camera power. All right, if you are gonna add a front camera, we also provide a toggle switch to manually flip that front camera on. That's gonna engage the front camera only at speeds of under eight miles per hour. It'll automatically disengage the camera once you exceed the eight mile per hour speed limit. If you, man, if you flip off the switch, the front camera will not be engaged at all. All right guys, so basically we're finished at this point. We've mounted our cameras, our driver's side and our passenger side camera. We mounted a re reverse camera and we're gonna mount a front camera to this particular van. We ran it all up into the cavity here. We plugged everything into our camera harness and now we're just basically gonna plug our factory radio panel back in, mount it, put the trim bezel back on, and test everything, we're good to go. Replace the four T20 screws that you removed in the previous step.